Oh, <laughs> don't mind me. I'm just linting my Angular code. Wait a minute. That's not how you do that. Want to know how to really lint your Angular code? Stick around. Hey friends, welcome to NG Update. I'm your host, Mark Thompson, from the Angular team here at Google. Linting allows teams to discover potential problems in their code that might not be compilation errors, but they could be team-specific styles and patterns for consistent code. In previous versions of Angular, new projects came with TSLint as the linting solution. But it's deprecated and new Angular projects don't have a linting solution. But we can fix that. The incredible Angular community has led an effort to create a package called Angular ESLint that allows teams to integrate ESLint into their projects. We'll learn how to move an older project to ESLint and how to set up ESLint in a new project. Off we go. We'll start off by migrating an existing Angular application. My CLI is version 12, but the project is version 11. So if I run ng-lint in this v11 project, I get a message that tslint is deprecated. The first command we'll run is ng-add eslint schematics. This command will add the eslint schematic to our project. With the schematic installed, we can now run the second command, which will remove tslint and update your project setting to support eslint. That command is ng g angular eslint schematics convert to eslint and we'll pass in a few flags to go with it. We're using the ng generate with the schematic function from the collection. Also, we're specifying to remove tslint and codalizer from our project automatically given that these are no longer in use. If you have a mono repo, you can migrate one project at a time and tslint and codalizer will be removed once no more projects are actively using them. Thank you, Codalyzer. You've been great. This command makes a few updates. It adds an ESLint RC JSON file based on the TSLint JSON. It updates the architect configuration and sets ESLint as the target. And since we passed in the flag to remove Codalyzer and TSLint, they will be removed from the project. There's one other thing to note here. This is a conversion task, so that means that any existing TSLint configuration will be converted to the ESLint equivalent where possible. Be sure to pay attention to the output while running this command. If you don't have a pre-existing TSLint setup that you need to maintain, and you want to be immediately opted into the recommended ESLint config, you can additionally pass the flag that says ignore existing TSLint config, and your existing config will not be converted. All right, now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's run ng-lint. Yes, we've done it. I have something for you. You see this right here? That's a high five from me to you. Nice work. All right, we've got one project all set up. Let's update an Angular v12 project to use ESLint. Back to the code. Running ng-lint in our v12 project yields an error letting us know that there's not a target for this project. This is actually not going to be a problem for us. We'll run some commands that will get our linting configured for a project in no time. All right, here's the command that we'll be using. ng add angular eslint schematics. When prompted to install the package, we'll say yes, and then the schematics will be installed. We get one new file and two updates to existing files. The eslint rc.json file will be added to the project, and the package.json as well as the angular.json will both be updated. Hold on, that seems too easy. Let's check it out and see if everything works the way that we'd hope. Back to the code we go. Let's try out the ng-lint command for this project. Success! Our project is officially linted. Nice work. Things look great and we can configure even more rules to customize the configuration of our project. Here's what we'll do. We'll add a rule to eslint, we'll break that rule, we'll run the linter, then we'll go back and fix the code, and finally, we'll run the linter again. That sounds fun, right? Yeah, I agree. Let's do it. We should always strive to keep our applications accessible by following best practices, like using alt tags when we use images, etc. Sometimes, however, we forget, but linting can help us here. We can leverage a linting rule that'll give us a reminder when we omit alt text from images and all the tags that require them. 
in ESLintRC.json, I'm going to go to the rules section for templates and add the accessibility alt text rule. In app.component.html, I'll remove the alt description, save, and run the linter again. Great. We see an error that's letting us know that we're missing an alt attribute in our app.component.html. We'll go back to that component, add the alt attribute, and then run ng-lint once more. Now, would you look at that? My favorite phrase, all files pass linting. Feels good. Friends, there you have it. We've migrated an existing project to use Angular ESLint, and we've added Angular ESLint to a new project. Big, big thanks to James Henry for creating this project, and thanks to all the contributors as well. There will be links in the description for James, this project, and more. All right, friends. If you're enjoying this crisp Angular content, please take a moment to like and subscribe. We appreciate you. That's it for me, and until the next time, go build great apps.